Caviar Dreamers. Hi, Caviar Dreamers. How are you today? We, I mean, what, where do we even begin? If you hear noises in the background, it's construction. Yeah, if you hear a dog barking, it's barking at the contractor. It is a crazy day. I mean, I happen to look like shit. I'm in mid-season filming. Uh, I only look good when I have makeup on. I ruined my hair with a product called Dr. Shapiro's. I'm just going to say it. I bought it to thicken my hair, and it changed the color of my blonde to a beautiful color of dead mice. Let me grab the glove. Rustic squirrel. Maybe. Yeah, rustic squirrel. That's nice, but rustic squirrel. It's it's absolutely terrible. So I'm waiting for Julius to come color my hair. So I look like absolute shit today. But we have a great guest on. We do. A lovely young woman who's really come on the scene very, very strong. Sydney Sadik. Yes, and Sydney is only 26, but she's a lifelong fashion expert. She's yes. She's been on today's show, Fox, Good Morning America. She is on absolutely everything. Yes. She wrote a book. Aim high. Aim high. Yes. And which is great. I love it. She's very inspiring to young women, which, you know, I'm so supportive of that, which I absolutely love. So it's so good. And I'm super excited to have her on because listen, she became a lifestyle expert, very, very young, very driven, has big career goals. And she also did an amazing pivot once, you know, she was really doing amazing a lifestyle expert on lots of live TV shows. And when TV took a turn and everything went virtual and Savannah was doing, you know, today's show from her home and, you know, Al Roker was in his kitchen doing the weather. She had to pivot and find another way to keep engaged with her fans and followers. So we're going to ask her about that too. Yes, because it's very hard. And I think everything's about the pivot. Life is very unpredictable. And it's about how a young girl has also pivoted her career and we can learn a lot from her. So I'm so, so excited to have little Sydney Sadek on. Hi, Sydney. Hi, Sydney. Ron, how are you? Good, how are you? We're so excited to have you, but I literally have a house full of contractors and craziness. Oh, do not worry. I literally just threw on my makeup like two seconds ago. So. No, you look yeah. adorable. I said, Sydney's going to come on, but it's just like my hairdressers are come do my hair. I'm filming today. So thank you so much. We're excited thank to you. have you. I'm so excited. I know. I'm so we were just saying, you're a young girl. How old are you? 26. Sydney Sex, 26. A big, and by the way, you're a lifestyle expert. You've been on so many things. I mean, E, Today Show, Endless Things. I mean, you have a book, Aim High. So impressive. Thank so you. Had, like, what made you want to become a lifestyle expert? I mean, basically, professional know-it-all. Tell us. I, I mean, mean, I truly, honestly, growing up in New York City, first of all, just being around fashion so much is the best way, I feel like, to get yourself into something to begin with. Um, but the, it all started at a program for Harvard Summer School because my parents said there was no way I was getting into college if I had never had some sort of overnight experience. And I was definitely afraid of going to sleepaway camp. Like, those scenes in the parents' trap with Lindsay Lohan piercing each other's ears and just being in the woods, it was not for me. So I said, I'd rather do something academic. And I took this course and I had to start a blog as part of this journalism program and I brought it back to New York once the program did end and interviewed Rihanna and I was just dying to have a celebrity connection to this site and the article ended up blowing up and from there, I just knew that I always wanted to merge fashion and journalism together and became an editor at the Daily Front Row, the long running Bible of New York Fashion Week. And at that point, I was just had graduated from GW in DC. I was submersed in total broadcast journalism and loved watching fashion segments. And I started getting some calls just, you know, saying, can you come on and do these quick segments? But then after being at the Daily Promo for like six years, the calls just kept getting even more intense. And I said, I have to make a choice because I had to keep leaving work to go to these shows. And from there, that's when I knew it was time to go and do this on-air fashion uh, contributing full time. I know. That is so amazing. That's such a great story because like you're living your dream. So tell us about Aim High. Tell us about the book. Like when did you write the book? I mean, I want people to buy it. Tell us. Thank you. Okay. So writing a book is essentially like giving birth to a child. Now I've never experienced that. Yes. 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 I agree. I'm in the middle you know, of writing a book. I know. 
okay. So it's like the level of intensity. So you know it. Um, so it took two years for it to really come into fruition, but the book is called Aim High, How to Style Your Life and Achieve Your Goals. And I get all these messages on Instagram once my fashion segments ended asking me for more tips and advice. And I felt that after six minutes, once these shows ended, I needed something that women could go back to and feel like it was more of an extension of the topics that I was talking about already. So it's really about finding your personal style, but also encouraging women how to bring out their confidence from within, because confidence is something that never goes out of style, ever. You have it. Always. That's perfect. I love that. You know what? And it's about being comfortable in the skin you're in. And I think that's the most attractive thing about a woman or any, any human being extremely confident. Because as I'm sure you would say, I, I've known the most beautiful women physically who have no confidence. Exactly. And, and, they, and they cannot own a room or, or do anything about that. So I think it's about having the confidence. And I think that's amazing that you are so young and that you have that. What do you attribute that to? I mean, it definitely didn't come totally naturally when I was growing up. I was extremely shy. I went to a very small girls school. I wore a uniform for 13 years of my life with no ability to really express myself. And I can't attribute it to one exact moment, but I really do believe that just having a strong family foundation around me was the easiest thing to make me feel comfortable and realize that it's okay to just be who you are. Not everyone's going to like you. Not everyone's going to agree with you, but if you do you, that's all that matters. And I do me every single day. Some people might not like what I'm wearing. I get body shamed all the time. I talk about this in my book, the hate on Instagram, not about my outfits, but about my body. That's a whole other story oh believe me i live it every bit i mean prior to me getting a facelift everyone's like oh, get a facelift do this i don't like your smile i don't like i mean i know i, li I live it all day long which Everyone is very unfortunate i would never think of going on uh, instagram or anything and, and yeah. publicly insulting and saying fix this fix that it's, it's crazy never and that's why too it's like about encouraging women to be nice to each other because social media has really gotten people to sort of be able to hide behind this username and say whatever they want. But if you really are putting out the energy to the universe and to all the women around you, karma is a real thing. I think karma is a bitch. If you do what's right, it'll come back to you. And dressing and feeling the way that affects your mood is really a huge part in that. I think that's yeah. super important. It really is. So your first celebrity interview was Rihanna. Let's go back. Yes. How did you okay. feel that? I know I totally went over it. So I saw an article in the New York Post and there was like an advertisement next to it and it said Rihanna is coming to promote her book at Barnes and Noble on Fifth Avenue. This is now 10 years ago in 2010. And it's ironic because I have her book here still to this day. And I waited in this line for literally hours. I cut school early. I begged my Spanish teacher to let me go. And I'm the last person in this line in my uniform changing on the middle of the street on Fifth Avenue and 43rd Street. And I finally get to her and instead of asking her to just sign the book with her name, I said, can you please write your favorite fashion accessory? So then I was able to write that and turn that into an article. Rihanna reveals her favorite fashion accessory at this, um, you know, event. And I was able to promote it out through Facebook because Instagram was, was just starting then. No one really was on it. And it blew up. It got like literally 10,000 viewers within minutes. It was so crazy, the whole thing. And that was my first really- Okay, awesome. now don't kill me. What was yeah. her favorite fashion accessory? It was I like, it was scarves. She said scarves. I, oh. I don't know. This was 10 years ago, so. I, I would say scarves are still my favorite fashion accessory. I like sunglasses. Maybe chokers, head scarves. I do. I, bags, I think scarves. Make what? a shirt. That's not a bad one. I have, to yeah. think, I have to think of mine. What's my favorite fashion accessory? I mean, maybe sunglasses. Sunglasses might be mine because I always wear a very big sunglasses. Good luck. Yeah. Lexi knows me. So where's yours, Sydney? I would say okay. sunglasses or big gold hoops. I think yeah. it's just like, especially now, and I know, you know, the question is in general, but when you're on these Zooms and we're, we're all sort of being virtual, it's all about the waist up. So whatever I can do to draw the attention up here <laughs> yes. is yeah. my favorite right now. I know. I think it's super, super important. So tell us some great fashion tips. Like give like women, you know, because people are having, have such a hard time to get dressed. I know you're about the high and the low and the mixing, which, which I love. I'm all about that. I'm all about a great top from Zara. Half the time I get a good top from Zara. I was like, where is that from? Where's that great puff sleeve from? Yeah. And, yeah. and yeah, right. It's, I, I think they I do such great Zara. things. I do too. I so do. tell us some great like things that you love to mix or that women can do because, you know, people are worried about money and things like that. 
A hundred percent. I think right now, because of the pandemic, women are not as eager to shop. Like there's this need, I think, for newness in our lives, but we're not looking to spend a lot of money. So the first place that you should shop is your closet because you already own those pieces. Yes. I'm sorry. Excuse the warning. Yeah. No. Because I don't have a fucking kitchen, but go ahead. (laughs) And for me, it's really honestly just about sort of teasing my followers and making them not even realize that I've worn that piece over and over again. So finding little tricks like earrings, like different accessories, like that really nice pair of shoes to just change up that same white t-shirt and jean combination that you've been wearing throughout quarantine. You're probably wearing leggings, not jeans. I can't even get into my jeans right now. Um, That is an obviously a huge tip that you can follow. I also think layering is something that we can do right now to really give us that kind of element of new. So instead of just wearing your little cardigan, I, for me personally, I don't love wearing t-shirts under my cardigans. I just kind of button it up and do that. But if you wanted to have this layered effect, throw on a graphic t-shirt on underneath you can wrap a scarf around your neck like just giving that 3d sort of dimensional look is something that's really easy but also i think there are a lot of sales right now if you must go and buy something new i think websites are trying to sort of market now better to the times and you will see like zara but zara can still be a little bit pricey but you can still find items under 50 dollars or going to a website like lulu's boohoo um but i really think right now just about fashion in general it's less about what's on trend And it's more about what you feel good in and about being individual and just really wearing what you feel your best in. Because right now there are no real boundaries. It's just about what you feel your best in. Yeah. And I think what what you look good in and and how do you tell someone to cultivate their personal style? Because I don't love a cookie cutter look. Mm -hmm. I think it's very important to look like an individual. So do you you work with people to cultivate their personal style ever? So I don't. Or advise people? Or advise people? I advise people. I try to do this on my segments. I do it on social media too. But I think like the first step in developing your personal style is figuring out what you don't like. So literally writing down a laundry list. These are the things I will never touch in my life. And that's okay. And throw them out. And then it narrows down the list of the things that you are willing to experiment with. And then I think it's just about trying. And I think also my style personally as a 26-year-old is totally different than who I was as an 18-year-old. And I think our style changes as we get older and evolve and we're in different moments of our life and that's okay but I think it's a lot about trial and error and also looking at women who might inspire you or runway shows online just seeing what gravitates to you and then sort of adding your own little edge and I think that edge is something that we sort of develop like I said as time goes on and it's different for everyone. Thank God we develop as time goes on there's some very questionable outfits that I've had especially when I was in fashion school very experimental. I know. Basis. Sometimes I'm like, what the fuck was I thinking? Ooh, well, I was ooh. very vintage for a very long time. And I feel yes. like I'm going back to vintage Marge. Because oh, it was God. all about, yes, cla- classic. I call it classic Marge. It's I true. I would not be going back to art school, fashion school, Lexi at all anytime soon. That was not attractive. I know. Um, so what, obviously you did a lot of segments on, on TV shows. And when the pandemic hit, it was like everyone was working from home. You know, there were no online segments. How did you pivot? Because that's one thing we focused on tons in Caviar Dreams is like that major pivot. Because it was scary. It was really scary. I was also at a really crazy point in my life. I thought I was about to move to LA. I was on planes literally every week. I was on E like every two to three weeks. Um, It was just a totally, you know, fast paced lifestyle. I was at a parties every night. Like I was at the peak and I feel like so many people can relate to that. Like we were all kind of doing what we wanted to do. I feel like right before this all hit. Um, so once I realized that I was going to be in the Hamptons and when I say stuck in the Hamptons, I sounds a little bratty, but you know what I mean? Stuck with your family in one place for months. I realized I had to do something that would sort of make me feel less alone because it's very isolating to just be with two people. Or six are you months. an only are you an only child i have a little brother so i'm here with my mom and brother and okay amazing, but like you know you're out all the time too like we have friends we go to parties for our jobs this is so different this is night and day to my life six months ago mm-hmm. um and so the way i pivoted which margaret we need to get you on as soon as whenever you have a free day but i launched a instagram live show called lunchtime with sydney of course of course i'll gladly come on i would love to come on okay done we're coordinating this yeah, so that day I'll have yeah. makeup and hair done. You don't have to worry because <laughs> no, yeah, I, my house will be normal in about two weeks. I do not worry at all. But each day I bring on a different celebrity, designer, personality. And it's really just to sort of get into the homes and spaces of these people and to really sort of have relatable, fun, lighthearted conversations about what's new in their life. Of course, touching on their personality 
personal style, but to really make people feel less alone during that 30 minute lunch break, because that is such a social time for so many people, obviously. And it's just been great. We've had over a hundred guests, you know, everyone from like Candace Cameron Bure and Rebecca Romaine to Michael Costello. Um, wow, you've had some fabulous. great, great people. It's been really fun to have them or like Ashley Longshore, the artist, and she just gets us a whole tour of her entire studio and home. Like the things that these people are doing are so in the moment. And I think that's what makes it special. Like it's not planned. We're not at a TV studio. No, not everyone's like so polished and crisp and ready to go. It's very organic. And I think there's something to be said about that, about that natural moment. Um, between me and the guests and then fans can ask questions as we go which they really love because they want their questions answered in the moment and they can do that I absolutely love that so tell me like what are you tell me like what's next for Sydney Static like when we get out of this crazy pandemic what what are your hopes and your dreams what are your caviar dreams Sydney I mean I you're living that. so many of them you're freaking 26 years old and you've achieved so much never enough though for me you know what I mean and I think that's I know the point, feeling right like I think a lot of women they feel like embarrassed or they shouldn't feel that way but if not then what's pushing you right like I'm my biggest competition I don't look at others I look at myself I um, yeah and you know honestly I think it's so hard to predict where things are going to go my dream was definitely I could have told you to work for one television network but I don't know if I can say that to you now because I'm not sure where that network will be in a couple of years because the media landscape is changing so much. But um, I definitely, you know, hope more on air. I'd love to have a wider range of products. I did a Aim High hoodie um, for the launch of my book, which we sold out in like four days with zero marketing. I just like threw it out on my followers and they bought it, which was awesome. And, um, you know, I think it's really the sky's the limit, but I think right now it's such a fluid time. Like you have to be flexible and just going with each day by day because you have no idea what it's going to bring. And there's no ability to plan right now. None. I, I think no. you are absolutely right. Everything's so unpredictable. And I, and I think that's great. I love that you're being so fluid, so fabulous. I think you're inspiring to so many young women. I think Thank you'd be great. I think she's great. Like to, to speak to people. Yes. I think you could definitely do lectures. Don't yeah, you think? And inspire confidence because style and confidence also connected. And when you do put on a great outfit and you look good, you feel good. And I think that some people feel guilty for wanting to look good. Like they might not be taken seriously. We've discussed this a million yes. times. You know, like when you were told, I don't think you should go on CNBC business with pigtails. And it's it was like, funny, you know, uh, Amy said that to me and we laugh about it. I'm like, Amy, and I said it point blank. I was like, get the fuck out of here. <laughs> Amy, when I met her, she used to tell me how to dress at my early stages of segments. And then I said to her, nope, off no, the Amy, Amy said that to me. I was like, get the fuck out of here. I'm not taking on my pigtails. She goes, ah, you're a character. And then Amy goes, you're a character. Keep the pigtails. And then she, and then she introduced me to John Rivers. John Rivers, like, keep the pigtails. It was just funny. I mean, listen, now I change my hair constantly, but I'll still do pigtails. You have to stick with your gut because as much as people try to help you, I say you can't, you know, trust anyone as much as you can trust yourself. So at the end of the day, I do what's best for me. And then if someone has a problem with it, they can go <laughs> talk to someone else. Exactly. <laughs> but I will say something. NBC did not put me on the Today Show first because they thought I was too out there with the pigtails. I had big boobs big pigtails yeah. and now you know that's my network right but you know? that's like everyone has a different audience and targeted demographic and if it's not that then it's something else which you I know which is so funny I wasn't their demographic then but girl I'm their demographic now that's hello bravo right. so it's just so fun <laughs> it's just that <laughs> one who took time you yeah. know yeah, I couldn't go on the Today Show then for a while. That was funny. Yeah, but for then a while, but for a while, then I did. Then I made my way on even before I got on Bravo. Yeah. But what about was me saying that I'm too young? That was also something, right? How could someone go on, you know, that kind of big of a show at twenty something years old? Now I'm on all the time. I am going to say something, and I'm not going to say what it was, and you know, because I don't want to burn. It, but something someone said once that I was too Jewish. That's not. I had cool. too much of a New York Jewish. Yes. image for a waspy thing and I was like a I said I'm not Jewish I sound like a new, I sound like a New York Jewish girl with my voice um that's fucked up very very era. fucked up to even say something like that and that brand um, tank so and that, that brand tank so I could give two that. shits yeah so <laughs> you probably needed this New York ships the Jew to do it for you anyway. I always wonder what people like that who have so much to say how they would deal with someone saying something to them. No, I know. I don't personally, I don't, 
you know, the person who said it to me, she was like, take off your eyelashes. She was yeah. like, I could really say shit about her. Yes. But, um, right? But that brand lived and died and here we are. Yeah, that brand lived good, and died so. and went bankrupt so I could give two shits. Yeah. Karma, them. that's what I said at the beginning, right? Karma. Yeah. I know, but I, I mean, could you just back. imagine the things that, the crazy, crazy things that Yeah, happen. people have a lot of opinions. A lot of opinions. That's what makes the world go round. Right? It's it absolutely does. So we ask all of our guests three questions um, to give great advice to the caviar dreamers that follow us. So what would be the most um, entrepreneur real piece of advice you could give to our followers? I think it's about being an executor and not just an idea person. So many people have so many great ideas, but they don't end up falling through. So it's like me with lunchtime with Sydney okay, it would have been great to just do it for two months. Now it's been almost seven months, over a hundred episodes. Now it's something real and established. So it's really about sticking to what you start with. I agree. And I think th I love that because you know what? There's no overnight success, right? It does not exist. I, mean, no, I love that you know they're so young. You're very yes. smart. Okay. Um, so I always say is just like, I, I always have to pull up my big girl panties. I have so many big girl panty moments. What is your big girl panty moment that you can remember? You're like, holy shit, how am I going to do this? You had to pull up your big girl panty moment to get it done. I think that's a really good question. I would say probably going to the Met Ball first time and not being able to go to the bathroom for literally <laughs> six hours of being on the red carpet. And that was literally panties being involved, but I had no idea how I was going to deal with it because if you went to the bathroom, you, you couldn't get back on the red carpet. You like were not allowed to go. It was like, this is it. No drinking water, Sydney, put your big girl panties on. <laughs> your big girl panties on. Or, 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 or a diaper. Exactly. Or a diaper. And I love that you were at the Met Ball. Jesus. That was so nice. It was very cool. It was very That, that is very, very cool. Not cool. They don't let you go to the bathroom. I was not happy about that. So. Yeah. Jesus. Oh my God, yeah. I can't wait till we can get back to having that ball. I can't wait to be, week. you know, it's funny, like when I'm doing Fashion Week and I'm dressed up and I'm having a great time and by the end of it, I'm like crying because I'm so exhausted from going out every night and the filming and I'm like, I don't want to go out, I don't want to go out. Now I'm like, I want to go out, I want to go out. <laughs> you know? I'm going to dress. Yes, I mean, the first, I, I'm going to be honest, the first like few weeks of COVID, I was nervous, I was just, then I was enjoying it. Then I was like eating nonstop, yeah. I was cooking lunch every day. You know, my, the girls that we work together, we decided we're going to quarantine together. We all live right by each other. That's so I was nice. cooking yeah, every nice. day and we were together. We had a nice time yes. at first. We had no makeup. We got fat together. It was great. It was cute. It was very fun. It, it was, was fun. Fast. And then after that, we're like, all right, get us out and of that's here. Already. Enough. Let's get moving. We don't do well with like static. We, we need a lot of movement of the ocean. Yes. I know. I said I feel claustrophobic. And for me too, I grew up in New York City. So for me to be in this whole suburban world, it's just not what I'm used to. Like I'm not used to not having a doorman or like big concrete. Like I'm just looking at the same three trees every day. And I'm busy, but it's very hard when your environment's so consistent like this. For yes. And, you're, you're, and when you're, we're social beings. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. So, we're so just, we always say the launch is part delusion, part determination. Probably about 50 a week. Yes. So what would you say you are? Well, I would say, what was the first part? I couldn't hear I you. I would say I, my success is Mark, the, yeah, 50% yeah, delusion, 50% determination. Because uh, oh, I said, if I don't believe my own fucking hype. Determination. Yeah. I would a hundred percent for me, it's determination. A hundred percent. I feel like I'm so focused all the time that that's what drives me. And I feel like I always have a goal. So for me, if I like knowing that I can check something off of a list every single week, even if it's like the smallest thing, like just reaching out to someone, that's enough to make me feel like I did something. So definitely determination. I could probably use a little bit of delusion being a little out of it. <laughs> list people also. We're li yeah, Lexi's <laughs> list people, list people. But I would say it's just like, you know, oh, yes. from being a young girl delusion. You know, I would always, I just always say it's like delusion is like, nothing's going to go wrong. Yeah. Everything's going to be amazing. Yeah. Not me. You know, I was just, you know, I always dream the impossible dream and then somehow it happens. The and that was always optimist. the eternal optimist. I feel like I'm with that. I'm like that with dating. Like I like assume it the best and then expect, you know, expect the worst, but not in my <laughs> career. My outlook on dating and career are totally different. So. Okay. How is the dating going? Oh, uh, it's, 
I mean, it's a little hard, obviously, right yeah, now. Yeah, now during the pandemic, prior to the pandemic, yeah. how was it? I mean, I'm scared. I went, you will actually love this story. I went on a date Friday with someone who I'd matched with on Bumble like a year ago when we rekindled. And he was like, I'm going to be in the Hamptons for the weekend playing golf. Let's go out. This is the power of social media. I swear to you, I had my mask on 98% of the time, except when I took a sip of my drink. I take the mask off for like literally a minute. All of a sudden, I'm getting calls from my mom in the middle of this date with like this guy who's like a very successful, attractive man screaming, you don't have your mask on. I said, how do you, what are you talking about? Like, how do you know? I'm like looking around. There has to be someone who posted me here. The owner of the restaurant posted me on his story. No. Me without my mask, like right when I was drinking the drink. So my mom's like, you're all over the guy's story. I was That's so funny. <laughs> mortified. And I didn't hear from the guy for a couple of days. So I was really worried that like, he really thought I was crazy. And he was dealing with a 16 year old essentially. But uh, he texted me last night and he goes, so did you get in trouble when you got home for not wearing your mask? Uh, that's so <laughs> funny. Yeah. So, all right. So it's great. Okay. All it's right, okay. you'll keep us posted. Yeah. You'll I'm keep us bit. posted. Rolling with the punches. Good, good. So tell, every, thank you so much for coming on. You're thank an absolute you. pleasure. So smart, so inspirational, thank fun, you. great. So tell everybody where to find you. Uh, you can find me on Instagram at Sydney Sadik and my book Aim High is available on Amazon and Barnes and Noble. Okay, perfect. Well, thank you so much. And I can't wait until we could be together. Yeah. I know. It'll be Which so is soon. Fun. When are you going to come back from the Hamptons? I mean, I'm going back to the city this week and we're kind of going back every couple of weeks, but like now the cases in the city are going up again. We're almost at 2%. Um, so I don't know. I usually go to Florida a lot this, the, during the winter. I don't think we're going this year. It's a little crazy. Yeah. Well, at least the food's good. That's what I said. My mom's an amazing cook. Thank God. All right, right, good. That's good. All right, listen, we'll make our way over. <laughs> All right. Thank you so much. This was so great. Thanks, love. I so appreciate it. Okay, we'll talk. Okay. Thanks. Bye. Bye. Well, she oh. was so inspiring. So inspirational. I mean, we're so crazy and just organized and living in a shit show right now. Maybe she needs to just come over and help us pull our life together. And no, like, she's great. Organized. 26 years old. So impressive. I love when a young woman knows what she's doing, has her goals set up. The way she started is so incredible. And she gave some great tips. She really did. And I do love that she pivoted her TV stuff into Instagram Live, which I also think is such a great way for people to interact with their followers. She, you know, she was able to really engage with her own audience and keep growing through the pandemic. Yes, which is so important. And you know what else I love? We have the same agent, Amy Rosenblum. We started, I started with Amy Rosenblum. Yeah. Now Cindy Static has Amy Rosenblum. So we have a common thread. She has a roster of beautiful blondes. A beautiful blondes. Amy obviously has a thing for blondes. Right now I'm the color of a squirrel, but uh, <laughs> I will be back to my beautiful blondes. Also. Shortly. 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 Well, that was such a great interview. Oh, and I hope you guys great. can see how you can pivot at any age. She's very inspirational. Please follow Sydney Sadik at Sydney Sadik. Sydney Sadik, yep, on Instagram. I'm on Instagram. All her information's there. We'll put a swipe up to her book, Aim High. Also, yes, on great Instagram, book. I mean, come on, 26 years old, wrote a book. Yeah. So great. And you can find me at The Real Margaret Josephs on Instagram. And you can find me at The Life of Mrs. B. And we have Caviar Dreams, Tuna Fish Budget. Yes, Caviar Dreams, Tuna Fish Budget. And soon there'll be a book out, Caviar Dreams, Tuna Fish Budget. So you can learn Ooh. everything from the Marge and where it all started. That's going to be some story. Some story. Have a great week, everyone. Keep dreaming. Keep dreaming, Caviar Dreamers. Um, no one.